Now the board's done, I'm looking at the case and the power supply. <coughs> Just the usual things about the warnings and what have you. These caps have got quite high voltages on them, so. Um, I am going to test the power transistor with the multimeter um, and then uh, take it out very carefully without trying to touch it and then test all the caps and make sure there's no voltage before I touch it. So just testing with the multimeter. I'm happy there's no voltage left on that board before I start messing around with touching it. Board out and safe and now we can clean the case up. Just make a note of these bits. This is the insulation I think. Right side, I've got somehow get this out. I wanted to clean the case, I dipped around with this connector, I didn't want to crack the plastic sand in, I just tied a glove or a condom would do around with a zip tie around the wires. Waterproof washed it, take that off, dip it in ice prop to get any water off it. I cleaned up the uh, <coughs> bottom section and uh, give this dust off with some air. It looks like okay. I haven't tested the caps, but I'm gonna just uh, get it back together because the dogs are coming tomorrow. So Let's just get this all back in and we'll see what the voltages are like on the oscilloscope and then I'll patch these uh, sections up. I'm going to reinforce them with some two part four minute epoxy. We're back together that screw the pain in the arse and we've got 5.28 volts. So to fix that, I'm going to cut up some uh, plastic, put it over the top, then two part epoxy it on, hopefully that'll strengthen it. I was using like what the chips come on like. Fix these, I'm going to do the same technique but use a zip tie underneath so it'll just be all the way along underneath and then epoxy. Use the top of a Johnson's baby bug carrier, I'm going to get the seed out. I've got conversion now, and that is now very, very strong. Two zip ties there, very, very strong, and there's a dab on there. Only thing that's missing is that and I can't find it in the box anywhere so I can't account for that but I can't tell and it should be strong now. Let's kind of get our balls back in, just testing it out, it seems to be fitting. Apart from this silly little wire here, I've got to sort it out but yeah, um, it together. Clean that chip up and put it back in, but I'm not going to power it up because it looks like it's something to do with a clock. I've got another one from eBay for a couple of quid, so I'm going to try that one first. Uh, and it's quite tarnished, and if it's not, the clock's not working, it can apparently damage the chip, so I might as well wait a couple of days for that. But, looked on the Time uh, Software blog, and thanks for that, he's got a, <coughs> this is a normal motherboard. <coughs> it's only got two connectors on it. What we're going to do, there's nothing going to this pin. And on the back side, it's only linked by one um, trace, which is here. So what I'm going to do is cut that trace, so there's nothing going to this top one. That's the positive. The negative goes in the old one. The two do fit, so it fit like that. And so on the back, if you imagine now, at the moment they're just linked by that back trace. Cut that trace, put a diode on the back of the board probably overkill but I'm going to use that just to make sure there's enough clearance in the case <coughs> so it won't get hot under the battery that's why I'm using a big diode and then so it won't be charging the battery because it's a standard laptop <coughs> non rechargeable battery 3 volts to power the clock and there's no power so I'm not going to zoom up on it with this camera because it's going to do my head in but I've nicked that track there Tried there, it works so easy, nicked it there, so there's now no continuity between that and that, which means that the battery won't charge because and it won't discharge either. And now we're going to put the diode in, um, and I'll do that now. Okay, so there's a little diode soldered on the motherboard so that the stripe goes to the motherboard side, <coughs> and the track underneath it's been cut, so it's got to go through the diode. Continuity, there's died on the back. 
And the lithium free cell holder on the front takes time off software for that. Taking up a scar and a D sub or D nine pin D sub <coughs> for a scar for the Archimedes a credit to uh, Retro Clinic, link in the description. Bottom load of ground, the top are sync and RGB. So that's the uh, scar cable, there's just uh, one mic cap and a diode. But it's easier to just put the description, it's not my idea anyway, so I'm not going to try and pass it off as my idea. So uh, that's the cable knocked up. I jumped the gum in the Archimedes because I was reading the instructions and said, Oh, don't run it for more than a few seconds, if the clock's damaged, you'll fuck it. So I turned it on for two seconds, turned it off, get the grey screen, nothing. You've got to let it run a little bit, and it come up. And all the keys work lovely. And uh, this is just because I've been messing around, but that's all good. So this chip, well, it's a bit tarnished, I cleaned it up, put it back in. This is a faff to get back in. I would uh, lubricate it with a bit of isoprop to get it back in. So that's all back together, clean, working. Just got to figure out how to get past this uh, administrator screen. The way I did it, put the back plate in first, otherwise you can get round it, but you have to take the board screws out again, lift it up. And then you have to take this surf wire out and put it all back. So I better put this in first. You can do it if you just bend the middle out and it's got a slide in behind there and behind there and behind all the way along and in there. So that's a pain in the ass, frankly. So put that on first. Dries back in a bit of a I just tuck that under there and sort the kit speakers around. That's the way they were around before and that's why it's gone back easier. So let's get all this power up, see what happens. Dries trying to power up. You can hear it. Sounds terrible. But we're still at supervisor, so I'm just going to start it up, holding down delete. We've got the two megabytes, so the memory's showing up here. All back together. With the kitty buttons, uh, the kitty stuff on the front of it, which basically I'll take off later. The only sign of damage it got in the place, which is a sh fucking shame. Is that dink out the corner, which I might try and make up some epoxy for. Um, but, considering the state it was in with all these bars missing and what have you, I think it's um, come out alright. That was a repair, you can see. Comes with the repairs and the, and the thing inside, but I think, uh, yeah. Not bad. Okay, so this is a bit of an epilogue, if you like. This weather's been so shocking, I've fished this out. It's been there, sitting there for about, oh, probably nearly a year. Um, I did get it to the supervisor screen. This is the SCART cable, I think, that's causing this. But, it does work. If I type uh, ROM modules, ROM modules, if I've spelt it correctly, which I haven't, I spell it correctly. Right, I'm trying to look past the camera. ROM modules. It lists all the ROM modules. So something's working. If I control N, is it? And ROM. I'm not an Archimedes person. I just wanted one of these. So I don't know. The first thing. So you can pause it. All the modules. A lot of them are unplugged. I don't know. So t to the me, that says the ROMs are working, but I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Uh, all lots of modules, all unplugged. Uh, nothing going on there. So then we go modules. Those are the modules that are loaded, probably by the last person who had this. Don't know. What I have figured out is if I type in RM re in it desktop, it takes that. And if I type in RM re in it window manager, and I spell it correctly, it, it oh for didn't do that correctly, did I? R M re init 
window manager with one hand manager you should accept that and then I type desktop we get this far there's no mouse, I don't know if that's an issue and there's no any more than joy than that so it is kind of working after a fashion um, the other things that it does, uh, someone said it might be something to do with the CMOS battery well it's got that, it's got a new battery in so I don't know about that um, sort of fishing around for help really, if anyone knows anything about these things could you let me know what I might do here? I'll just show you one other thing. Turn it off. Turn it back on. I'm not too worried about the SCART thing because I have that on other things where I've hacked SCART cables where it's not quite lined up and blah blah blah. But I get these colours, these weird colours, and what else I get is four flashes here. One, two, three, four. Now, someone said that's to do with the CMOS battery. Now, I did cut a track to stop the battery charging. Maybe that's why. Eventually, it settles down. He said confidently. And we've got this weird... I think that's a SCART cable. So, yeah. Uh, that's where I got to with this. It's kind of working. But it's not usable. So, if anyone can help me, help me. Be very, very grateful. So, yeah, just to confirm... It is a SCARP thing, because if I use the composite mono, video mono, whatever, whatever, get the grey screen, which is the red screen on the other one, with the SCARP. Still get my little four flashes. Uh, eventually, 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 it sorts its head out. There it is, in the right place, all working. So, yeah, I think the, the picture, the, the weird weirdness on the prompt is just a scarp thing. So, I need some help, please, if anyone can help me. Um, I know there are links under here that do things. I know that this used to belong to a Bolton education department so it probably had all sorts of things on it which were configured and I've got to unconfigure I doubt that this disk drive still works but it might be wrong I might be wrong anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon cheers bye